Hey, welcome back into Weekend Joe, driven by Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Alton Toyota here on ClabesOnline.com. Time to talk a little football. It's like Radio Row, but just a week early as we are joined now by Westwood One, the host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. He is Ross Tucker. What's going on, man? How are you? I am doing awesome, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. That opening was awesome. That was intense. I like that. I can tell you, I had nothing. I, I sent the pictures and the video, and I gave it to somebody much smarter than me. And I said, hey, can you put something together? Because I sat in front of my computer for about six hours one day trying to do that, and I just hit delete. I didn't even save the work that I had done. I am so clueless when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I am not good at that stuff either. That was cool, though. Whoever did that is talented. I will pass that along uh, along to him. Um, you're, you're sitting now... And you get a week off of uh, of no football games these past two weekends, and your in just all of your years of football that you have taken in and participated in, have you ever seen anything like the last six games that we've gotten on the NFL schedule? No, I don't think so. Uh, we have been extremely fortunate. I think the divisional round was the best weekend of football. I can never recall. I mean, Saturday and Sunday, every game better than the next. And then the conference championship games were pretty darn good as well. I don't know if they were quite as good as the divisional round, but they were pretty darn good. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've been telling people on the Even Money podcast, my betting podcast, I like the Bengals and the points because every playoff game it comes down to a field goal. So if every playoff game comes down to a field goal, I'll take – uh, the four and a half points. Thank you very much. That's a yeah. That's a a good point. Uh, but the the Rams will have a, the home field advantage there, and I, I don't know how much of a home field advantage that is. Ross, you're you're on in St. Louis, so I mean, we we love seeing the takeover of SoFi Stadium by opposing teams these uh, these past few weeks. And I is imagine- there anybody, Joe? Is there anybody in St. Louis that roots for the Rams? If there is, you question them. You 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 have a lot of questions for anybody that lives in this town and still supports anything Rams related. I for I mean a week ago, two weeks ago, I, Ross, listen to this. Two weeks ago, St. Louis was rooting for Tom Brady. I just <laughs> imagine that. I mean, twenty years ago, if you would have said that, you know what? One day. You're going to be a huge Tom Brady fan. That's what it was like, though, in the uh, in the divisional games when it was the the Rams and the Buccaneers. We wanted to see Tom Brady win a, a playoff football game. So that's how crazy bizarro so, world it's been here. It's funny. Like I'll be happy for Matthew Stafford. I'll be happy for Eric Weddle if those guys win it. I'll even be happy for a guy like Aaron Donald. He's such a great player. He deserves it. But I'm not really happy for the city of Los Angeles. They, they don't deserve it. It's not a good sports town. They don't love the Rams. I would much rather see the Cincinnati Bengals win their first ever Super Bowl. That would be cool. It, yeah, it, it very much. It would be it would be so cool to uh, to see that. Uh, we're huge. I mean, huge Joe Burrow fans. You can't walk down the streets of St. Louis without seeing somebody do the icky shuffle nowadays here in St. Louis. It's uh, it, it's just uh, great times to be a Bengals fan in the city, in the uh, in the Gateway City. Uh, Ross is with us today on behalf of myfrontpagestory.com. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we uh, as we go along here. Uh, but uh, Ross, the 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 game itself coming up this this uh, next Sunday, I should say. I'm already in radio row mode. Have you been to SoFi Stadium yet? Have you had a chance to see that place? Yeah, actually, I was there for the wild card game against the Arizona Cardinals. That was my first time ever at SoFi Stadium. That was the last stadium in the NFL that I had yet to get to. So I have now been to all 31, I guess. NFL stadium, no 30, because there's they share it in LA and they share it in New York. So 30 NFL stadiums, but I, I've been to all 30 and it's a really cool place. It's just like so um clean and new looking and modern and like everything's like touch pads, you know what I mean? It's just it's just like a totally different feel. As you walk into these new stadiums today, does it just I mean, what does it do when you're walking in there? 
knowing some of the stadiums that you played in back in the day or some of the Ivy League stadiums that you that you saw like and you're walking into things like this well it's funny that you say that because I think possibly the two oldest stadiums we have to check on this but might be Harvard Stadium at Harvard and Franklin Field at Penn and I know the Yale Bowl is really old as well So I think I've been in like the oldest stadium. I've played in the oldest stadiums and I've been in the newest and it's a big difference. It's a stark contrast. It's cool though. You know, it's, it kind of shows how we've evolved as a society and it shows the growth of American football, which is great. Obviously it's the sport I love. So it's kind of cool. I guess I read one time, um, you know, that they discuss, civilizations in large part based on their biggest buildings, right? Like the Roman Colosseum, right? Because that's a good indicator of what those people were like, what was important to them. So it's kind of cool that, you know, these are the modern day gladiators. And I I guess I was one of them for seven years. When you were, so I'm I'm trying to think, when was Gillette Stadium? When was that built? You, You played in Gillette, right? I did. In fact, in 2001, I played at the old Foxborough Stadium uh, as a road team in the preseason for Washington. And then 03, I played at Gillette Stadium. I, I want to say 02 was Gillette Stadium's first year, but I was there in 03. I started the game for the Buffalo Bills in 03, the last game of the season at New England. And the Patriots went on and win the Super Bowl again that year. I've never been to Gillette, but from what my my understanding is, it's kind of just a football field with an entire complex kind of built around it. So it's 365 days of a reason to go there, unlike football fields of the past where it was like, okay, you know, two preseason games, eight home games, and maybe some playoff games. And then it's just a big building the rest of the, uh, the rest of the year. Was that kind of the start of that trend? You know, um, I think it, I'm trying to think FedEx field. Yeah. You know, I think you're right. And I think everybody's jealous of that. And everybody kind of wants that because they've turned that whole area into, you know, this big real estate thing. That's been, I think very successful for the craft family. So I think that's partly what Kroenke wanted out in LA. He wanted all of the, the surrounding real estate and the development that goes along with that. And now he gets to uh, put it on uh, on display for the whole world to see coming up next Sunday. You, you mentioned Matt Stafford. You're you're hopeful he wins a Super Bowl. I, I got to say, after being stuck in Detroit for all those years, I I get it. I I do. I, I think he deserves it after all that. But the the Joe Burrow story that he has just come on the scene, you know, winning the national championship, tearing an ACL, and now in the Super Bowl in his second year at what, I mean, is it too early to anoint him? Uh, how, how does somebody, how do we as the media kind of deal with him and not put too much pressure on a kid like that? It's a good question. Uh, I don't think it really matters what we do. I interviewed him a couple minutes after the game on Sunday and I was allowed to have three questions. And the first question I asked him, I can't remember what he, you know, what he said or what I even asked, but he was so relaxed. He was so chill. I, my second question, I changed it in my head. I was like, Joe, you just won the AFC Championship game. You're going to the Super Bowl. How are you so calm right now? And he's like, well, yeah, I was excited when he made the kick, but it's a couple minutes later now. And, you know, I thought we would win the game. We came, I mean, it is just, he's the calmest, most uh, relaxed guy I've ever interviewed. It was crazy. And that coming from the other side where Patrick Mahomes has just been there for his entire career in those same situations and seems just as cool and calm as well, too. It's the the, the future of NFL quarterbacks seems to be in pretty good hands. Especially in the AFC, man. Herbert, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Burrow. Uh, NFC is a little bit more lacking, especially with the young guys. Uh, Ross, you're here uh, today. We're talking to you on behalf of MyFrontPageStory.com. I know you've talked about it a few times here uh, over the past few years on our show. It's just another great idea for a gift for uh, that that person that's just so hard to buy for. Well, it's the best Valentine's Day gift ever. I mean, I, nobody ever knows what to get. Flowers, chocolate, a gift card to like a spa, take them out to dinner. 
you got to change it up every once in a while. And I've seen a lot of videos now of guys giving their wife a story from myfrontpagestory.com. It's awesome. Because, Joe, they don't know what it is. They're like opening it up. They're like, what, what, what is this? And you're like, and most of the time the guy's like, I, I had a story written about you. And they're, they're so confused. They're like, what do you mean you had a story written about me? Yeah, I had a story written about you. So then they see it, and there's a picture of them. It's framed. It looks like it's on the cover of the newspaper. And they start reading it. They cry like every time, dude. It's, it's, it's almost automatic. I can't guarantee it, but it's almost automatic that they will cry tears of joy. I told my buddy who started the company, the motto should be, they will cry, you will win. Myfrontpagestory.com. Ross, you going to be out in LA next week? I'm not, actually. That's why I'm talking to you now. I'm not heading out there. I don't have any gigs out there. And I've, I've been away every weekend for at least one game since the Eagles' first preseason game, August 11th. Uh, it's well over 30-some games, probably 40-some if I went and looked at it. So it, it'll be nice these next two weeks to just be home with my family and uh, enjoying the game. I might just sit at home. Maybe I'll get together with some buddies. Watch Super Bowl. be fun. All right, Ross. Hey, thank you so much. Good catching up with you again. My pleasure, Joe. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Love being on in St. Louis. St. Louis Acura was the number one Acura dealer in Missouri in 2021, and we were the 17th in the nation for Acura sales volume. We sell over 100 pre-owned vehicles monthly, and we service all of the makes and models that we sell. We are waiting for verification of our 30th Acura Precision Team Award, the only dealer in the nation with so many awards for customer satisfaction and dealership performance. We have 300 pre-owned vehicles in stock right now. St. Louis Acura, better than ever for you.